Today I finally clip into my first pedal based power meter. I've been talking about these for a while. Finally they're here. Today we're going to unbox them, install them on the bike and have a first ride of them. I've been a user of PowerTap for a few years. Ten years ago I started here if anyone remembers that unit. I've also got the new dual head unit as well, but we're using the Garmin today because that's just what's on the bike. So why have I gone the PowerTap P1 pedals? Well, a number of reasons. The two main ones are the ease of installation. These things just go straight on the bike with a hex wrench and there's no other torque wrenching or anything like that involved. Very simple to install. And also there's no pods or external units that are gonna snap off. We travel quite a bit with our bikes. The pedals come on and off. The bikes get sort of stacked on top of each other in the back of the car quite often. And those pods would simply snap off. So they're not really applicable for what I want to do. These are also super accurate. There's papers published that put these up against SRMs and in the lab, these are just as good. So in the environment that I'm going to be using them, which is testing the power against smart trainers and other power meters, these are going to be a great addition to the kit. Before we get to the unboxing, just a bit of backstory on PowerTap. There's a ton of information they've put out on their YouTube channel, which is excellent. It covers their quality control, super important plus also how these things are built, how they're tested in the lab, the technologies used, they even have the engineers talk about the tech behind the scenes, and it's really, really good. So for me, the customer confidence in getting these and ordering these was pretty high. But let's put that to the test though today, on the bike and uh, looking at some numbers. On to the unboxing. So the box itself is actually what you'd expect an expensive device to come in. It's quite nice. Uh, quick start guide, as per normal, that goes aside. Um, talking about the batteries used. So quality control check, and that actually has been signed by a real human. So they have tested these. I like that. Tap, tap, tap in there. So the actual pedals themselves. I'll link to other reviews below about all the weights and things like that. But for today, I just want to get these out, put them on the bike and get up and running and collecting some data. The proprietary pedal cleats, which I believe are, are similar to look, but not quite compatible. These have six degrees of float. The default supplied ones have six degrees of float. You can also get zero degree float cleats as well. Um, and as we all know, on Christmas day, when you don't get batteries, it's a sad thing, but so they include some uh, AAA batteries here. There we go. That's as, uh, as easy as it gets, but the box, high quality box. To save some time, let's get these batteries in first. Okay. You can see the O-ring on there as well, so to protect them from uh, any water ingress. You can also note they've put the ANT ID there, but no Bluetooth ID. It's quite uh, interesting that uh, Getting your Bluetooth, uh, it's interesting that Bluetooth is completely different. They don't give you that information. It's just sort of attempted to be plug and play, but that's why connecting with Ant a lot of the time is a lot easier. Aussie flies, get out. Okay, we're done, we're powered up as per the documentation. Now, as everyone knows, I love the Shimano pedal system. So let's get these off and uh, the new one's installed. Hex wrench on the inside, pedal down, pull up. And we're off, and the same on the other side. This is why we go to the big ring, so we don't put our wrists into the chain ring. Hex wrench in, foot down, pull up, and we're off. That's it, off for now. Now a bit of lithium grease on the pedal spindle just to make it easy to get these on things on and off. And also just a bit of polish. Keep all the junk out. Now the torque setting of these is power tap, just say whatever your manufacturer says. So for me, it's just a snug turn and we're done. 
oh sorry, the crank manufacturer. So there's no torque setting required for the pedals at all. Just as long as they're not gonna come out. That's it, and then we just snug them up. I think every single review I've seen says the word snug, so let's use the word snug. All right, snug. And wiping off the excess. Upon first installation, or if you're swapping bikes with these pedals, you've got to wait about two or three minutes for these things to do a, effectively find their feet, I guess you'd call it, to know where they are in the whole pedal stroke of the circle to give you accurate power data. It's also important to zero your offset after a few minutes into every ride. To do that, you just simply let the pedals hang when you're not clipped in. And with your head unit here, just use the zero offset. Well, they call it calibration on the head unit, but it really is just zero offsetting. Another important setting on these is the crank length. Your pedals have to know sort of how far they're out in the circle. So if you're using 172.5s, that's the default. If you're using 175s, you have to set it, or 170s, 165s, et cetera. So make sure you get your crank length right. I know I'm gonna be using them on a number of bikes, and my TT bike is also 175, so I'm gonna to have to remember that. If you're using them on the one bike, no problems at all. And that's also set within the head unit that you're using. And yes, it's no mistake that I'm actually using the Cyclops as my uh, bike stand for today. Under the cleat installation, uh, these appear to be a little smaller than the Shimano cleats. But one thing I'm conscious of is getting the right height here. So Shimano cleats have a small bump here and here on the edge for the center of the cleat. I can't see the same marking on these. So I will assume that's the center line across here. So we'll go for here. And here is the center line, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna use that line there as the center. We'll see how well that goes. I'm gonna, it definitely will be a, a go on feel given they don't have those markings. Okay, we're back. Um, I'll also mark out these cleats on both shoes, just in case I need to go back to them at any point. I mean, exactly where they're installed. So the cleat is a little smaller, but I think we'll be able to get it in the same spot. Yeah, looks good. Job done. So the next thing I'm keen to know about is how the clip in and feel is with these new pedals. As I said, I'm a Shimano fan. I've used those cleats for years and years, and this is my first time going elsewhere. Let's see how these go. It's hard to find the front of it. There we go, that's, okay. It's... Yeah, they're in, they're feeling fine. That's way too much float. Way, way too much float for me. You can see the, the wobble there, it feels like they're just gonna fall straight out. Usually I unclip with my right, so it's just simply finding the front and straight in, it's... So yeah, it's a bit of difference there. I'm catching on something, it's... What am I... It feels like I'm catching on the front lip on that there with the front tab but I'll get used to that I'm sure okay but you can see I just I'm just falling out of these things straight out I could not very very loose okay let's look at the play on that Okay, that's a lot better. Still, I think, I'll, I think I'll be going the zero degree float cleats though. You can see a little bit of heel play there. Probably, it's just way too much on this side. 
it's not float adjustment as such, but it's clip in and clip out and sort of just snugness. Out of the box, these are on super light clip-in, so I've gone to about halfway, and they feel a lot better. Okay, that's a lot better, but I will be going the zero degree float cleats. I'd rather be locked in tight um, than sort of slipping out sideways. But let's see how they ride. Okay, battery status, software version, serial numbers and everything in there, that's fantastic. Okay, crank length is already set to 172.5, good stuff. And we want to unclip and calibrate. So we push them back, let the paddles just hang by themselves. Garmin says calibration, but it's actually zeroing the offset. There we go, we're installed. What we'll do now is we'll go indoors and put this on the Elite Drivo Trainer and do a few steady state efforts and a few step efforts and some 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off. They're really good at diving right down to see how quickly power meters respond and report their power. So how will the P1 hold up? Let's go find out. I've downloaded the PowerTap app just to check the firmware versions and it looks like we're on the latest revision. No updates required. So we've got a few to sort through here. The plan for now is the PowerTap pedals on the Garmin 820 the Elite Drivo Trainer on the 800, and the Stages Crank Arm. We'll let Zwift deal with that one. Not that important, but nice to have a third, uh, third source of data. That should give us three fit files to compare. Five minutes done on the power tap pedals. Let's get these calibrated. Well, zero offset confirmed before we start recording data. Okay, we are good to ride. Indoor session done, we've now collected all the data. Let's have a look at what the results were. Okay, thanks to Raymaker, we've got access to this multi-range analysis tool. I've put two seconds moving on just so it's a little easier to read. But looking at this, overall, the PowerTap P1 pedals, the stages with Zwift, well, Zwift, I meant to say there, um, and the Elite Drivo, that's all looking really, really good. What I'm also noticing here is at the end of the session from the sprints onwards, things track a lot better than what they did early on. Let me uh, dive further into what we're seeing here. First five minute interval, bit of a kick at the start there. The pedals grab the power straight away. So the responsiveness through here with the pedals, is fantastic. Bam, it's up and then away we go. What I'm noticing here is the driver is reporting just a little higher than everything. Well within the spec though, so that's, that's fine. The stages are sort of jumping all over the shop, but overall the average is pretty good. So that's, that's not bad for the first five minutes. The second five minutes, again, I do a bit of a kick out of the saddle. Again, the PowerTap P1 pedals, whack, straight away. They're responding so super quick. The stages are a little laggier there. It's sort of like, hey guys, I'm, I've only got one side to work with before it does some calculations internally. Um, but they track pretty good there. Now onto the interesting part, the 10 second sprints. Now this is where I put the flux to the sword the other day, and this is gonna put the Elite Drivo to the sword a little bit as well. Let's dive in as close as we can get with these 10 second sprints, probably a little bit less than 10 seconds. Rightio, let's have a look here straight away. Now the first to respond in every instance here is the blue line, which is the pedals. The PowerTap P1s are absolutely king of the castle when it comes to responsiveness. They're straight away on board. Second up is the stages, again with the strain gauges in that one. Matching the, almost matching the peak power. There again, the stages, pretty much one for one there, and the stages are a little laggy here. The last sprint, 
Could have been something as simple as I started this stomp here with the right foot rather than the left. And the stages in the last two are a little laggy to drop off. I'm guessing that's a left-right thing, given the stage is only records on the left, doubles it with the right, does a bit of guesswork. If I sort of put off the gas on the left and not the right, it sort of, it may have doubled that, give us a bit of a workout. Anyway, we can get into that another day. But this, the responsiveness of the Drivo, really, really good. The Drivo is not hitting the peaks, but it is damn close. So here we've got 1238 on the power tap pedals. The stage is recording 1231, so that's super close. The Elite Drivo is 1172. Not a lot of difference in the scheme of things. Now comparing this to the Flux video, um, which we're sort of halfway through debugging, I'll put the shot of that up here. You can see there's a big gap there. Um, but flipping back here to the Drivo, pretty impressive. There's about a second lag here. But we're talking one second and that's less than a second there and less than a second there. So look, really, really happy. So what I do find interesting with this analysis here, if I zoom in after the 10 second sprint jams, the power tracks really, really nicely across everything. Well, the stages is a little laggy in responsiveness, but we expect that given it's one-sided and a guesstimate on the right. But it's almost as if I've jumped in the car and given it a huge rev and then it's idling perfectly. Yeah, the conclusion is the data from the pedals is really good. The Elite Drivo, spot on, and the stages is what we expect. I think I'm pretty happy with the response to the stages. It can't be perfect, given the left-right guesstimate. For my own interest sake, I'll do some more testing um, post this as well, um, after giving these pedals a right revving, um, and then things coming closer into line with the Drivo. But that's really good. Look, that's, that's definitely a two thumbs up from me with the accuracy of these pedals. So you probably note the change in scenery. We're up in Sydney for a few days and I did take the opportunity to bring the pedals along and take them to the athlete lab for my workouts there. So no more than a minute or so to get these pedals on the bike and I had my data, that was really good. I also bought in the iPad so I could pair with these via Bluetooth and away we went. Now a couple of things of note. The stack height on these pedals is a little higher through here by about three to five mil than other pedals. So you may need to lift your seat just a little tiny bit for these. Um, the clip-in procedure, as you've seen just before in the video, I'm sort of struggling to get my foot in. I've still only clipped in a handful of times, but what's going on with my clip-in technique is I'm sliding the front across. I thought it was getting caught on that edge there. What's happening though, it's getting caught on the back. You can see just here, the back of the cleat, it's the lip just here. It's getting caught on the back of the pedal. It's stopping me from getting in smoothly. But once you're over that, you're in. I am wondering if I can actually shave that off a little bit, but we'll wait for the zero degree cleats to come in and we'll have a bit of a play with that. And when pairing these with Zwift iOS, you can only pair one pedal as the power source and then Zwift will double that. So effectively making your PowerTap P1 pedals the PowerTap P1S version. But if you're using Ant, that's not a problem. The two pedals will talk to each other and send you the full data. So I'm not quite sure that Bluetooth would be the best way to go, but for portability in today's session, that was just fine. I also had a quick look at the pedal scan analysis. There's a lot more I'm gonna do in this space, but very cool and super responsive as well. Uh, with left, right, as soon as I unclipped with one pedal, bang, straight to zero, and the other one went to 100%, and vice versa. One of the coaches at Athlete Lab came over and showed me this picture here when I was looking at the pedal scan analysis using those colors and where the power is put down. Really interesting stuff we can talk about in depth in another video, but it goes to show the potential of what we can pull out of these pedals. Very, very cool stuff. So there's my first look at these pedals. There's a few catches with the clip-in being a little different, the stack height, um, how they pair with Ant and Bluetooth. No showstoppers though. Um, I'll be looking closer at the cleats and see if I can make any modifications to these so it slides in a little easier. We'll see what we can do there. But overall, these are doing exactly what I wanted them to do. Two thumbs up from me on these pedals. There is the S model, which I've mentioned before is only the one pedal and it will double it. And stay tuned on this. I think there's a lot more we can do with that pedal scan analysis across multiple trainers too. All right, thanks for watching. See you soon.